What's going on there guys? The Earthmaster here on the live stream uh, with an update video. Uh, just getting back from the Oregon coastline. It's been a weekend up there. Kind of looking at some uh, old tsunami deposits and uh, checking out areas along the uh, Cascadia subduction zone up there in Oregon. Beautiful area. Uh, went up there with Missy Mimi's. Anyway, uh, what do we got? Uh, today's date, October 18th, 2021, about 3.21 p.m. California time. And the latest quake on the Earthquake 3D globe, a 2.5 earthquake in the Hawaii area. Uh, this comes just uh, shortly after a uh, little quake in the Northern California region. Actually, it looks like it may have disappeared. I uh, could have swore there was a, uh, a 2.7 up in that area. Maybe it was a little bit, uh, maybe they downgraded it. Let's go ahead and check it out on the latest map on the USGS system here. Well, it's showing up on this map. Looks like they downgraded it to a 2.4. This little earthquake up here into the Cascadia subduction zone. Uh, specifically into, it looks like in between one of these fault systems up here. Bald Mountain Fault and the Big Lagoon Fault Zone it looks like. But uh, kind of within the uh, Cascadia subduction zone area. That 2.4 is striking pretty deep. 39 kilometers below the surface. That's pretty deep in this area into that subduction zone. Uh, so no doubt a uh, definite subduction zone earthquake, even though that fault system is kind of mapped up here. This is definitely Cascadia related. We haven't really seen too much in the way of earthquake movement in this area over the last couple days, but things appear to be picking up, including an earthquake swarm up here around Mount Hood. Beautiful volcano into Oregon. Uh, I remember seeing this uh, volcano for many, many miles um, when I was traveling up here along the Hood River area. It's a beautiful, prominent feature out there along the landscape. And they are having quite the earthquake swarm right now. Uh, looks like, um, what do we got? 31 earthquakes. Most of these microquakes, in fact, probably all of them are. Um, looks like it started off with a 2.5 at about 2.4 kilometers since then, there's been a pretty good swarm of movement around the uh, Mount Hood area, kind of stretching down towards the south flank of it. Mount Hood uh, has seen some earthquake swarms in the past. It's just been pretty quiet uh, recently, though. So it's kind of uh, just popping up out of the blue. Go ahead and check out the all magnitudes for this region here. And you can see just scattered, sporadic, small microquakes around the Mount Hood area within the last 30 days, all magnitudes. But... Most of this earthquake activity occurring um, yesterday and today within the 24-hour period that's listed here on the uh, USGS map. So uh, kind of kicking up a little bit, just that one 2.5. And like I said, most of these very small quakes and uh, somewhat, well, I should, actually, they're pretty shallow. M majority of these things are shallow, two to four, two, one to two kilometers below the surface. So that's... Uh, some pretty shallow movement taking place there at Mount Hood. We'll check out the seismograph real quick on the PNSN network of the Mount Hood area. Volcanic seismicity map, Mount Hood. You can see those red circles indicating the earthquake swarm. Uh, looks like within the last, they have it here within the last two hours, but uh, I'm not for sure if that's accurate or not. I don't believe it is. What do we got here? 19, 18, 17. I don't believe that's right. Let's go back over here. But either way, definitely within the last 24 hours, maybe that's what they're supposed to, maybe that's what's missing there is a, is a, the four, it's gone. <clears throat> uh, and, and then again, 2.5, the largest, see what they got on some of these seismographs here uh, within this vicinity. There's not a whole lot that are popped up here. Let's check out the three component area. Well, <clears throat> there's the 2.5 it looks like. But uh, definitely not picking up any of the microquake activity and I'm not for sure why. Uh, it definitely appears to be squashed as far as the uh, sensitivity on this equipment on this uh, seismograph goes let me see if i can bring up uh, a different station <clears throat> sometimes a well this, this one's about the same 
previous day. Not for sure what's going on. That's just crazy looking. But it was picking up some uh, seis seismic uh, activity there at Mount Hood. <clears throat> Bring this back over here to BHC station. You can see that a little bit better without all the wavy lines. Some of that earthquake, microquake, earthquake activity definitely showing up here on the uh, on the previous day. But then on, on this map, we're looking at uh, just some squashed activity with this earthquake here showing up at about looks like three zero three hundred, which uh, I believe is the two point five close to 0, 0300 right there 2.5 0242 UTC time all these microquakes not showing up on this listed seismograph station but they are there nonetheless so kind of monitoring an earthquake swarm there at Mount Hood some activity popping up around the Mount St. Helens area as well not as intense also Mount Rainier in the Cascades also getting in on some action uh, the Northern California range looking pretty quiet. Mount Shasta, Las Canarias, all not showing any type of uh, earthquake activity for the moment. Of course, the tremor activity in the Pacific Northwest, the tremor activity along the Cascadia continuing as uh, listed on this map. Let's see if we can bring this up here. Uh, do, 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 tremor map. This was from yesterday, so we're not looking at today's activity yet. Got a couple hours before that does pop up. And, um, <clears throat> excuse me, and I'm sure this is going to be a little bit, a little bit heavier when it comes to trimmer, considering the activity we're seeing there at the Cascades, uh, with the volcanoes and also the deeper movement there into Northern California. So we'll check back in a couple hours with this map here, but this was yesterday's looking at 150 epicenters of trimmer along the Cascadia. There's that deep earthquake. It's just a deep one in this region here. It's kind of scary being up there for a couple days and sleeping in some motels right smack dab on the beach. Uh, beautiful views, but dangerous and deadly when it comes to the potential for a mega quake here along the uh, Cascadia subduction zone. It was, it was, it was, it was a fun trip, and um, I definitely had some fun uh, making memories up there with Missy Mimi's, and uh, it's just a beautiful area. We did check out some uh, tsunami deposits inland here into uh, this part of Oregon, uh, just south of the Gold Beach, or well, where was it? I think it was within this area right here. We got some uh, tsunami samples from past uh, events there along the coastline. And uh, yeah, it's pretty cool, pretty neat. Uh, definitely a big shout out uh, to her for helping me out with that. Northern California, pretty quiet, but southern southern half here looks like San Francisco southward. Looking at some increased movement along the Hayward and the Calaveras Fault system. Stretching down into the creeping section of the Sandras Fault. Also a little earthquake here near Kalinga, 3.4. Kind of getting uh, near the Pleasant Valley area. Kalinga sits right here to the southwest, just a couple miles or so. Not 100% certain which specific fault system is struck on. There's definitely fault systems in this area, just not listed here on the map. The Sandra's Fault sits over here to the west a few miles. Um, let's see what else we got here. A little bit of movement over here towards the uh, foothills. La Grande area, 2.7, 25 kilometers. Some deep movement uh, into parts of Southern California as well. Did see some activity around the Long Valley Super Volcano and also the Antelope Valley, Mono Lake, and the Tonopah, Nevada area all shown seismic increase over the last 24 hours. Ridgecrest did see a, a pretty good size uptick in earthquake activity following that uh, four pointer that struck here yesterday. You can see the four pointer right there in the blue circle. Looks like there was a couple mid twos as well followed up over the last 24. Just some microquake activity around this region of the Coso range. It's all volcanic up there, but also a lot of fault systems. Uh, when it comes to the uh, plate dynamics out, out here. So not for sure um, if this is uh, volcanic, but definitely the Coso range is um, has seen some uh, volcanic activity in the past. And the depth of these earthquakes here looks, uh, looks uh, pretty variable, really variable. So kind of keep an eye on this whole region. Ridgecrest area southward, pretty uh, diminishing earthquake activity, but 
more so up to the north. The Garlock Fault structure, pretty quiet over the last 24 hours. Southern California, <coughs> further south, Riverside area, southward along the, <coughs> excuse me, along the San Jacinto Fault area, seeing some seismic activity as well. Nothing big, just a couple uh, microquakes scattered up and down the landscape there. Uh, into the Intermountain West region, a little bit of activity into the Yellowstone National Park, just a little small movement uh, outside of the Yellowstone Lake area. You can see on the Yellowstone map here, not a whole lot, right? Just some microquake activity in this area of the park. You can see that listed here on these uh, seismograph readings with a couple of those spikes indicating that microquake activity. Uh, down here in Texas, down there in Texas, I should say. I'm not quite out in Texas yet. Some uh, three-pointers kicking up right around the Pecos, Texas area once again in the same area where we see uh, quite a bit of movement out there in earthquake country of Texas. A little bit of earthquakes around the Oklahoma and the rest of the country towards the east. Pretty quiet. Did see some movement around the Puerto Rico area, including the Puerto Rico Trench once again up here. Some uh, movement taking place on the deeper side up there and also down here uh, just on the south side of Puerto Rico. South America looking pretty quiet over the last 24 hours, but we are seeing some deeper movement into the Peru Chile Trench, into the subduction zone on the northern end. A little shallow quake here off the coast of Chile at 10 kilometers for that 4.7, the Scotia Sea. And the South Sandwich Islands, the trench area, looking pretty quiet right now. That could change here pretty soon. Uh, we did have that uh, earthquake this morning. Vanuatu area with a 6.1, pretty deep movement, 96 kilometers. Since then, uh, just haven't really seen too much in the way of movement in this area. A deep 4.8, uh, 498 kilometers south of Fiji along this region of the trench. Hawaii. Uh, there's some activity on the southeast region once again. This is just kind of typical. Haven't really seen too much more in the way of um, unusual quake activity off the Big Island. Kind of where that six-pointer struck here uh, a few days ago now. Just pretty quiet. Seen some movement out here into the Pacific, well off the west coast of Hawaii, 3.6. And also a 2.4 um, in that area of the Big Island Hawaii looking pretty quiet. We did see uh, this area up here kind of showed some movement last night, late last night, 5.3 in the Russia area. Down dip uh, into the subduction zone, 171 kilometers for that 5.3. Pretty quiet since then. Haven't seen a whole lot of movement along the western Pacific Ring of Fire, or at least the northwestern edge uh, since then. Mediterranean, Greece, all these areas here in the Indian Ocean, Mid-Atlantic, all looking pretty quiet. For right now, West Coast will lighten up, so just uh, be on guard. I think uh, the Cascade volcanoes and the activity that we have seen over the last 30 days or so, including all the trimmer, the massive amount of trimmer, kind of paints a big picture of uh, increased fault stress and plate stress out here in the Pacific Northwest. Uh, just kind of a, a dangerous scenario. Beautiful region up and down the coast of Oregon, but a lot of people... Uh, Unfortunately, a lot of people not aware of the uh, sleeping giant off the shore. You know, you got these tsunami, uh, tsunami signs all over the place, all up and down Highway 101 when I was up there entering and leaving a tsunami zone. But uh, I don't know. I mean, I, I think a lot of people just kind of pass that off as uh, that it will never happen. But uh, I think as time goes on and the stress builds up in here, we know the stress is, uh, has been building for quite some time since 1700 and you know it's just a matter of time before this thing does pop and unleash a uh, a uh, historic damaging event here for this country uh what else we got for the solar weather department let's check this out here real quick uh coronal hole kind of facing the earth side you can see uh down here actually a pretty good sized one and also up here to the north sunspot activity pretty calm Looking at the geomagnetic, three-day geomagnetic forecast. Looks pretty uh, minimal, but uh, it is kind of up there a little bit. Three to four on the KP. Uh, but nothing significant coming our way from the sun. And in fact, if you look here at the sea fl or the uh, flare threat, only a 5% chance of a sea flare. Extremely minimal, folks. Sunspot activity, zip, zero, zilch. Maybe a little one over here that will be facing the Earth, but uh, 
things calming down once again along uh, on the sun. All right, folks, uh, I'm going to jump off here. we got quite a bit of rain. Man, we had a lot of rain along the Oregon coast yesterday. Uh, driving around in that uh, was kind of cool. I love it. I love it when it rains. But uh, we got a lot of rain coming to the west coast over the next 10 days or so. Looking at a co- at least a couple inches of rainfall here where I live. And we need it. We need it here in California like crazy. Uh, last winter, in my rain gauge, I only had three inches of rain all winter that's that's the driest on record that i remember i broke quite a few records throughout northern california for the driest winter and in fact the winter before that was pretty dry too so we've had two significant dry winters here along the west coast and all of this rainfall that's coming at us over the next 10 days is very welcome in my book unfortunately there are some issues to deal with mudslides and the you know, potential flash floods in areas, the burn scars from all the fires here in California. But uh, we will take it. We need the rain like crazy. All right, folks, um, have a good day. I'm going to jump off here and just kind of monitor the activity and see what takes place out here. Have a good day, guys. We'll chat you a little bit later.